Shalom, and welcome to Via Hafta Yisrael, a Hebrew phrase which means you shall love Israel. We hope you'll stay with us for the next 30 minutes as our teacher, Dr. Baruch, shares his expository teaching from the Bible. Dr. Baruch is the senior lecturer at the Zera Avraham Institute based in Israel. Although all courses are taught in Hebrew at the Institute, Dr. Baruch is pleased to share this weekly address in English. To find out more about our work in Israel, please visit us on the web at loveisrael.org. That's one word, loveisrael.org. Now, here's Baruch with today's lesson. When we deal with worship, a major part of worshiping is giving. And we need to give based upon the instructions of God. And we're going to be looking at a passage of Scripture that teaches us some important principles on giving, how we demonstrate worship in our life that we are willing to make sacrifices and to give these offerings unto the Lord. So with that said, take out your Bible and look with me to the book of Leviticus, Leviticus chapter 22, and we're going to begin where we left off last week. We're now ready for verse 17. Again, the book of Leviticus chapter 22, beginning with verse 17, where we read these words. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, again, that statement is a statement of revelation. We can say that differently. It's a statement of instruction. And we need to realize how utterly dependent we are on the instructions of God. His instructions assist us in positioning ourselves in His will, in order that we might do his purposes and that we might reap the benefit of faithfulness so we are utterly dependent upon god's instructions look now to verse 18 where it says speak to aharon that is aaron the priest the high priest and to his sons meaning all other priests and not just as we saw last week speaking to this priestly family notice what else it says and to all the children of israel now when we see that phrase to all the children of israel realize something he's giving us revelation instruction that we all need to know yes it's going to involve the priests why why as i said we're going to be speaking about sacrifice And the believer's life is a sacrificial life. Remember what Paul says in Romans chapter 12. Based upon the mercy of God, that we need to live in a way that is pleasing, in fact, well-pleasing to Lord, where we become a living sacrifice, meaning everything in our life we should be willing to offer up to make sacrifices of our resources, of our possessions, of our skills and talents and time unto the purposes of the Lord. Now, if that's not what faith, the faith that you have, leads you to do and teaches you to do, there is a serious problem. We are called to live sacrificially and to do so in a way that is well-pleasing to God. And what's the motivation for that? Again, remember Romans 12, that we have become the recipients of the mercy of God. And now that mercy works in our life, we can say it differently, that grace works in our life to cause us to be submissive to the will of God. So he says, speak to Aharon and to his sons, meaning the priestly family, and also to all the children of israel and you shall say to them and then we have that common expression ish ish this means man man and how it's understood in hebrew is every man again when we see that that expression ish ish man man it is very inclusive It is relevant for every individual, what's being revealed in this passage. So it says, every man from the house of Israel, 
And notice how the house of Israel is being defined. And from the sojourner in Israel. So one who is not of the children of Israel by birth, but one who sojourns with them. And it says, who will offer up his offering, whether it is their vows or whether it's their free will offering. So we have two words here. The word neder, which is a vow, something that you promise you don't have to do this, but of a free heart, you decide, I'm going to render this unto the Lord. I make a decision to give this, to sacrifice this unto the Lord. So it's a vow. Now, later on, we see another word that is rooted in the Hebrew word for being generous. And again, this is something that one, it's not a requirement, but one desires to make it not as a vow but simply offering up freely a gift to god a sacrifice an offering and what does he say here who will offer these up and it's in the plural they who offer up these things to the lord they do so and it says here in this case ola which is a burnt offering why is that important because a burnt offering relates to giving in its totality all unto the lord it's all consumed so that's the context and why do we do it well look at the next verse verse 19 we have a word that is going to be repeated several times in this section and it's the word ratzon ratzon in the simplest terms is will meaning what one wants it's also can be translated delight so it can be the will the desire the delight of someone but it can also have a degree of being accepted so it has to do with what is going to be accepted by god from this this offering this person who gives freely whether it's a vow or whether it's a free will offering so in the next verse look at verse 19 where it says for your acceptance now it's so that you can become a delight unto the lord you're giving this why in his will for his purposes meaning you're doing this to participate in the things of god wanting to be drawn into his presence so one who's making an offering whether it's a vow or a free will offering for for this one to be accepted for this one to delight god for one to experience the will of god it says let such an offering be and we have the word tamim which means blameless also it must be a male whether it's from the cattle or from the sheep or from the goats. Verse 20. And all which is in it a defect. And this is an important Hebrew word. It is the word mum, which shows some flaw, some defect, something that is not uh, proper. So it's a blemish. Something is wrong. And what it says here, look again at verse 20. All which is in it, a a blemish, a moon, a defect. You shall not offer it. For it is not for the delight. It will not be of the delight for yourself. Meaning it's not going to have a good outcome for you. It is not going to cause you to be brought near, to be accepted. It is not going to bring about the will of God in one's life. So it will not be acceptable for you. It's not going to have a good outcome. Rather, now look at verse 21. A man that he will offer a peace offering unto the Lord in order to do what? Well, we have the word here le fale now that has to do with something that is extraordinary good and what is teaching us is this it is 
extraordinarily good for us to fulfill our vows now some bibles in fact most simply say a man that will offer up a peace offering unto the lord to fulfill his vow or his free will offering but the intent here is one who wants to behave in an extraordinary manner what is that he says something and he completes it he is faithful to his word and that is rare whether this uh vow or whether this free will offering is of the cattle or of the flock if in 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 both of these cases it must be blameless and it will be if so it will be unto delight it is going to bring about the will of god it is going to be acceptable but it says here all which is a blemish every blemish you shall not that will be upon it in this case it's not acceptable so that there will not be a blemish upon it those those offerings and now it's going to describe some of the possible defects that can be upon an offering and again we're talking about a an animal that's being offered up like we said whether it's the cattle whether it's the sheep or whether it's from the goats look now at verse 23 a blind or a broken or a maimed or one that is ulcerated meaning having some sore that is is uh leaking and an issue of of infection or that which has eczema or a scab it says you shall not offer up these unto the lord a fire offering it is not given by them meaning none of these things are acceptable for a fire offering unto the lord upon the altar of the lord so these things whether it's blind whether it's broken whether it's maimed whether it's ulcerated whether it is of a skin disease whether it is eczema or whether it is scabbed over none of these can be placed upon the altar of the lord it is not going to bring about that which is acceptable to the lord god's not going to respond in a way that moves you into his will there's not going to be a good response verse 23 and if it's a ox or a sheep now some bibles will say lamb but it's the hebrew word say which is more inclined with a sheep a sheep that is one year old and here look at verse 23 where it says a ox or a sheep that has a limb that is long meaning longer than normal or uneven is the case one limb is longer than the other or whether it's shorter it says for a free will offering uh you shall make it so you can use an animal that has one limb longer or shorter for a free will offering but notice what he says he says but for a vow it will not be acceptable meaning this it's not going to be to the delight of the lord it's not according to his will now again this same word ratzon appears over and over in this passage and it's all about delighting god in order that his will would be made known and become a reality in one's life he also says move to verse 24 a animal that has been bruised or crushed or torn or cut you shall not offer unto the lord and in your land you shall not do meaning this in the land of israel this ought not be done any of those types of of conditions and look at them again look again at verse 24 that which is bruised that which is crushed 
that which is torn or that which is cut you shall not offer up unto the lord and in the land you shall not do so it is unacceptable but notice something else verse 25 and from the hand of and this is interesting because this is an individual and the term here and let's be very specific ben nechar what's that this is someone who is not of the lineage of the house of yaakov meaning this one who is not jewish now we talked about how a sojourner has a unique status he has chosen to live in the land the word for a sojourner comes from the root which means to dwell to live to reside he has chosen that he's not there temporarily he's there with a commitment but now we're dealing with someone for whatever reasons this one who is not one of these categories not part of the house of israel not a sojourner it says from the hand of what we would call clearly a a non-jew you shall not uh, offer for the bread of your god is is from these meaning this what we find here is that you don't offer this because these things are not the bread for for your god why what's going to tell us for they have corruption in them or they have a moon a defect in them and they are not acceptable for you so we need to see something in order to worship god what's the principle the principle that's being taught here is there must be a commitment to him and what is that commitment how is it it recognized again most of the scholars say through a covenant and that covenant brings about a change in his identity no longer does one who have a covenant is he seen as a ben nechar he changes he becomes new and different he is brought into the house of israel so in that state of no covenantal relationship with god he cannot worship god he cannot sacrifice to god verse verse 26 and the lord spoke to moses saying an ox or a sheep or a goat that will be born meaning born among you born in your flock or your herd it says that such one that is born shall be seven days under his mother under his mother's care and it says from the eighth day eight has to do with change eight has to do with a kingdom experience and now beginning on the eighth day this animal that has been born is able to be used for worship so from the eighth day and further meaning from the eighth day onward it is acceptable for an offering specifically a fire offering unto the lord and again this fire offering has to do with something which is totally completely given over not expecting anything back other than god is going to move in your life to cause you to be where he wants you to be he is going to provide what you need in order that his will his purposes can be maintained and accomplished and here's the truth worship brings about a change a change which is an agreement with the will of god so worshiping is is inherently connected to the will of god look now to to the next verse verse 28 and an ox or a sheep with it and with its son shall not be slaughtered on one day meaning this 
that you should not take an animal and slaughter that animal with its son or offspring is what it's speaking about on the same day here again in a general sense based upon context we're talking about a slaughter for a sacrificial purpose not speaking about food but worship everything in this passage relates to worship so he says once more a ox or a sheep it and its son you shall not slaughter on one day the same day verse 29 for you shall slaughter and this is a different word sacrifice a sacrifice of thanksgiving unto the lord for your delight you shall sacrifice now this word your delight meaning that you become a delight unto the lord that you do this in order that you might be acceptable to him so the whole purpose of these sacrifices is to draw near to god in an acceptable manner you understand that to approach god what does the scripture say not to do so with an empty hand and i think it's so significant yes we have vows that are mentioned here but we also have a free will offering which as i mentioned earlier is derived from that word for being generous here's a biblical truth those who are in a new covenantal relationship with god will be generous in their offerings and sacrifices unto the lord why because they realize that this generosity brings them into god's will so that they have the privilege of doing the will of god fulfilling the purposes of god that's what maturity is about not my will but your will shall be fulfilled isn't that what messiah taught us in the garden of gethsemane that it's not about what we want but we need to be submissive to and committed to the purposes of god and these offerings bring about a change where we can demonstrate that commitment so he says here look again at verse 29 for you will will sacrifice a thanksgiving sacrifice unto the lord for your delight you are to sacrifice it so that you have the joy of doing the will of god verse 30 Be'yom ha'hu, on that day. So it's not the same day, but it says, Be'yom ha'hu, on that day, he will eat. And he will not allow to remain from it, from that sacrifice, until the morning. So you partake of it completely. In this case, when we're dealing with such a sacrifice, which is a thanksgiving offering. So in this guard to the sacrifice, thanksgiving offering that sacrifice it says he will eat it and he does not allow remain until the morning any from it i am the lord it's completely consumed and it shows again that commitment to thank god to praise him to acknowledge him verse 31 and you shall keep my commandments what does that mean guard them this word lishmor is a word of significance so we recognize the significance of the commandments of god and not only we recognize their significance but we see them as valuable the word lishmor has to do with guarding something that is of great value so you shall keep my commandments and do you shall do them why i am the lord now here again why is that verse there interesting what some of the commentators say worship gives us the ability to fulfill to recognize and to fulfill the instructions of god in other words we need to worship god and if we realize that we're going to make that a priority of our life so let me ask you a question is truly worship a priority of your life i want to say this 
a person who has been born again by God's grace through faith in the gospel. The scripture says that this one is a new creation. And and being that new creation, you are going to have a strong commitment. Let me say it a different way. A passion for worshiping God. Now, uh, you may uh, not find a place that you feel comfortable and appropriate for worship. More and more people are struggling with that. But don't allow that to be an excuse not to worship God. I think it's very important that people assemble together. You can do that in a home. You can do it in a different place. It doesn't have to be a, a, a recognized house of worship. But we need to worship God. It must be a priority in our life. And that's what this scripture is saying. Look again at verse 31. And you shall guard, keep my commandments. And you shall do them Why? I am the Lord. And worshiping God and fulfilling his will ensures something. Notice what he says in verse 32. And you will not profane my holy name. And I will be be sanctified in the midst of the children of Israel. For I am the Lord, the one who sanctifies you. So what he's saying is this. As we take serious our responsibility to worship God. What does worship mean based upon this passage? To live a life that is acceptable to God and to offer up to him give unto him sacrificially and to do so generously and to do so in a commitment that term neder for a vow is a word of commitment and here again it's not something that God commands it's something that we choose to give to him that we want to show our commitment, our passion, our love, our desire to be well-pleasing to him. So he says here, and you will not, is literally what it says, and you will not profane my holy name, but rather I will be sanctified in the midst of the children of Israel. And who am I? I am the Lord who sanctifies you. Last verse, verse 33. Now, verse 33 says a lot because we're going to see that we're talking about the Exodus here. Let's read the verse and then we'll come back to it. Verse 33. God is speaking. He says, the one who brings you from the land of Egypt, the Exodus from Egypt. What should come into our mind every time there is a reference to the Exodus from Egypt? Passover. We could say it differently redemption now the fact that verse 33 is there gives us a connection between what i've talked about many times before and that is that close relationship lots of times i like to use the phrase an inherent relationship between redemption and worship what does that mean when we're redeemed we are going to be committed to worshiping god in fact until we are redeemed we're not going to be able to worship god as he commands to be worshiped so redemption is huge huge and what do we see we see that god tells moses to tell the children of israel i'm going to bring you out of egypt and you are going to be on a journey and what are you going to do worship me that there will be a festival unto the lord in the wilderness and that festival all festivals relate to worship look at verse 33 our last verse again the one who brings you from the land of egypt out of that land of egypt and as i've shared as well many times that word egypt reflects affliction stress anxiety pain suffering all these things god redeems us from these things to be for you for god redemption allows us to experience god in our life this is what it says here to be for you for god 
and he says i am the lord what's he speaking about well this name i am the lord is god without any limitations we say in hebrew lo hagbalot without any restrictions whatsoever when we enter into a redemptive relationship with god and how do we do that through the new covenant only through the new covenant we have an eternal redemptive relationship with god where god has promised to be god unto us and that unto us is for us he's going to do what's best for us now that does not mean that he's going to do what we want him to do doesn't say that but he is going to do what is best for us let me ask you a question what is best for you you know what the answer is there's only one answer god's will what is the best place for you to be in his will what is the best thing for you to do to carry out his purposes and what we find is this when i'm in his will doing his purposes fulfilling his objectives what happens i experience that intimacy with god and that intimacy is going to produce joy a powerful a unique a non-worldly joy meaning one that a person cannot experience in the natural it's only for the congregation of the lord that we can have that joy and let me give an example of that joy in my mind probably the best example of this is found in the old testament or at least the best example from the old testament and that is when moses came to mount horeb let me say that differently mount sinai two different names for the same place and remember god said take off your shoes for the ground that you're standing on is holy ground what does that mean in this location i'm going to teach you about my purposes my will realize holiness and the will of god are always linked together and it was this experience that that moses had at that burning bush on mount horeb or mount sinai both terms refer to the same place and it was this experience that caused him to accept god's call in his life why because he wanted the children of israel to have that same worship experience it is only through this covenantal relationship whereby we are brought into the presence of god that we can experience god and how do we experience god by worship when we do all three act of worship in an acceptable way this is what we've been talking about those principles that god reveals to us here in leviticus 22 in order to be accepted by him that our worship would be pleasing to him that there would be an outcome a response from him and that response is he receives it and when he receives your worship he is going to work in your life in order that your wife your life can be used in the purposes of god and this is what you have been saved and delivered for to be a useful servant of god so this 22nd chapter what we have studied in the second part from verses 17 through verse 33 they teach us important truth for worshiping god and my recommendation to you is this that now you go back through these verses and look for them and what they teach us about principles of worship in order that we might rightly order our life in a way that it's well pleasing to god that we approach god in a proper manner of worship and when we do you can expect something god to go to work in your life to bring about his changes and how do we need him to change us to move in our life to get rid of those things that are not pleasing to him that are hindrance to the will of god being done worship is a catalyst for change i'll close with that Until next week, Shalom from Israel. Well, we hope you will benefit from today's message and share it with others. 
Please plan to join us each week at this time and on this channel for our broadcast of loveisrael.org. Again, to find out more about us, please visit our website, loveisrael.org. There you will find articles and numerous other lectures by Baruch. These teachings are in video form. You may download them or watch them in streaming video. Until next week, may the Lord bless you in our Messiah Yeshua, that is, Jesus, as you walk with Him. Shalom from Israel. Shalom from Israel.